Hello and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today it's all about soap recipes. <laughs> I am going to leave in the description box below four new recipes that we're going to try today. And what got me thinking of this is I need to make some unscented soap. I ran out and I like to keep unscented goat milk soap in stock for people that have fragrance sensitivities or just want a really basic soap. And I've been wanting to try a couple of new recipes and I thought this would be the perfect time to do that. So I'm going to make four batches using four different recipes that I've not used before. I will leave them all down below and uh, they will all be unscented so I won't have any fragrance to add to the factor because I want to test these for firmness, creaminess of the lather, how it unmolds, how it behaves as I'm mixing. All of those things are going to be tested today. Uh, and what I'm going to do, these will all be a goat milk soap. I will do milk in oil method for each of these batches. And for the colorant, because you know I like to add a little something in there, even with my plain unscented all natural, I will be using green clay and spirulina to bump up the green color because that green clay is a very light green and so this will just make it a nicer green. So that will be a color swirl in each of these batches. Um, for the molds today, I'm not going to use my big triple tall skinny from Workshop Heritage. I love that mold and uh, when I know what I'm doing, I that's a big batch. So because I'm going to do four smaller batches, I'll be using these molds. This is from Essential Depot and it holds, it says on the website, this mold holds between four and six pounds of batter. So I'll be doing a four pound batch in each of those molds and I will take you through the soap calculator. When I'm done talking here, I'll flip you around and show you how I'm calculating each of these recipes to fit this mold, um, how I figure out the lye concentration and all of that. I'll show you how I do it and I am not super uh, computer savvy and or math savvy and if I can do it you can do it too. Okay two of these recipes are going to be palm free. In my base recipe that I use for the majority of my soaps I do use a ethically sourced palm oil in there so uh, it's an organic sustainable palm and um, but two of the recipes that I'm testing today are going to be palm free options because I know that is a sensitive area. Some people really like to avoid palm at all costs and I understand that. Um, so we'll give those a try. It's going to be uh, a milk and oil method and along with my clay and spirulina swirl, I will be adding my colloidal oats and my kale and clay to each of these batches because those are additives that I like to add in my soap. So I want to give these recipes a fair taste of what I do to a soap and see how it behaves for me. Um, I will be adding sodium lactate in the lye solution because that is normal for me to do that and sugar in the lye solution also. So I want to do sort of my normal soaping patterns and try these new recipes and to judge them fairly I have to kind of do the same for each. So that's the plan. <laughs> You're coming along with me. So I am also going to be sharing in the description box below one of my favorite resources when I started making soap. It's called millersoap.com and I just randomly found it when I was interested in soap making and prepping my first homeschool uh, science class for my children which was the first time I made soap was as a science experiment with my kids. This was over 10 years ago. Anyway I stumbled across their website and they have a ton of recipes, a ton of troubleshooting formulas, um, lots of information. It's this wonderful resource. It's been around forever. A lot of people know about it but if you've never heard of it I'll leave the link down below. Check it out if you're a new soaper. Great resource. So it's that's what I used when I very first started soaping. That and Brambleberry I think were a couple of my biggest resources in the very beginning. So I'll share all that below and anything else I can think of that will be helpful for starting uh, making soap for the first time and or formulating new recipes. So with all that being said, I need to get all of my equipment out. I need to get my computer up and running and let's go calculate some soap recipes. Then we'll get the hair pulled back, safety gear on, and we'll make four batches of test soap. And I will also have a lather test at the end of this video. I am going to um, not publish this and I'll wait till the soaps are a good couple of weeks out from Cure so we can come back and do a lather test on each one of these batches. And uh, let's see how it goes. Let's make some soap. And if you've been enjoying the videos, please consider hitting the like button and subscribe and the bell for notifications. All right, All right. welcome to my home computer here. 
Um, so what I've done up here in the Google search bar is I just put soap calculator and I wanted to show you the first one here that comes up and I apologize I am hand holding my iPad right now and so if you're getting shaky shots that are making you dizzy I'm really sorry I could not fit my tripod on my desk here so this is all me holding this by hand so I apologize for the shaky camera so um, soapcalc.net here is a really good one and I'll be using that today to formulate our um, recipes but I just wanted to show you Brambleberry is the second one here on Google and they have a great lye calculator and a fragrance calculator wonderful resource um, down here this is a basic one there's one that I like here you go the sage lye calculator let me just click on it real quick it is a very simple lye calculator and um, when I was first starting I liked this one because it was just very simple to use and so that's the page and see what it looks like now we'll go back and i'm going to show you the one that we're going to use today which is a little bit um i'll say it looks more complicated it's not it just has more information which is actually good it's a really nice one but um it's a little more it has more options there there's my finger you know it has more input of uh details and things so this will be the calculator we're going to use today uh, so let me get my recipe out okay so the first thing uh, is that the NaOH is for sodium hydroxide that's lye um, the other is potassium hydroxide we're not doing a soft soap this is for cold process soap so and it automatically goes to that you have to manually do another Today I'm going to be uh, putting in the total amount of ounces for our four pound loaf that I want to do. So I want 48 ounces total of oils. Um, over here, percentage of water of oils. Uh, I am going to put in 25. Normally when this comes up automatically, it says 38. I like to do a, a water discount. That's how I prefer to soap. I want a 5% super fat. Um, I'm not going to worry about the fragrance here because we're not fragrancing. This is going to be an unscented. So there is that. So now you come down here and this is all of your oils and you find what you're looking for. This castor came up first. So it's gonna have castor oil. Want 5% castor oil. So you have a choice here. You can fill out the percentages on your oils and then it'll give you total and it'll come over here with the total for ounces or you can manually fill out ounces, how many ounces of each you want to do. Um, it's your it's your choice. I'm going to fill out, which is nice. So if you get a recipe in percentages and you want to size it to your mold, you just fill in the, what the percentage is on that recipe, and up here you put, you know, the total that you want, and it'll figure it out for you in ounces or grams or pounds or well for soap making I wouldn't do pounds I would do ounces or grams. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and fill in the percentages here and you'll see the ounces will come up when I when I hit the um, calculate recipe button. So all right, castor. Uh, we know we're gonna have coconut oil and the 76 degree is normal. 92 degree is a special coconut oil. So unless you seek that out, that's not what you're gonna be using. 76 degree is a normal coconut oil that you buy in the store. And the percentage of coconut oil is 30. Whoops, sorry about the wiggly camera. 30% coconut oil, anyway, 5% cocoa butter. So, okay, in the in the percent aisle, aisle here, you're going to want to go for a total of 100%, and then they'll figure the ounces out by the by that number up there for the total ounces. All right, so we got cocoa butter. Uh, let's see, and the next we have palm oil and olive oil. So we come on over here. Look at that. You can even do chicken fat. Isn't that funny? Um, all right, so we're coming down here to do, 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 do olive oil. So you have to choose if you want olive oil or olive palmase. I'm using olive oil today. They do have different sap values, so you want to know what you're working with. Um, and the olive oil can be a virgin olive oil, pure olive oil. It'll say palmase on it if that's what it is. So just you know, make note of that. If that's what you're working with, you definitely want to put that into your calculator. So this has 50 percent olive oil and now we're coming down here to palm oil at 10 percent and then we will just hit the button here and I'm going to go calculate recipe and if I'm not at 100 percent it'll tell me it'll give you a little flaggy sign it'll say you need to add more or take away some 
And here it is. So there's the ounces. It's at 48 ounces of oils, which is what we want. So that is our measurements in ounces of what we're going to be using. There's the percentages of what we're going to be using. And this is my recipe number one today for testing. So now that that's all in there, um, you can go over here and this gives you some numbers and you're like, well, what do those mean? Here is view or print recipe. Click on that. It's going to take me to another page here. And this is just a printable page and it shows you everything. The totals up here. This is a 5%. And so you come down here. So in ounces, this is going to need 6.85 ounces of lye for this recipe. If I was using fragrance, it tells you how much you want to use. This is the total amount of volume. If you use the amount of water, they're saying before the cure. So it says over here before cure, because this will, you know, the water will dry out of there. So um, what else do I have? Okay, so 12 ounces of water to 6.8 ounces of lye. That sounds fair. I'm going to use that. So over here, it's got the whole recipe. It even gives you grams if you're measuring in grams. Um, but what I really am look, focused on is down here when I'm formulating a recipe. This right here is what's got my attention. So hardness. You want to be somewhere in the middle. I like to be on the upper side of middle. So 40 is good for this recipe. Cleansing. This is a highly cleansing one. It's uh, because of the 30% coconut oil. But I like that. Conditioning. It's pretty high in conditioning. Bubbly. It's kind of right in the middle of bubbly and creamy. It's in the middle. So those are good with me. Um, the iodine and INS, I'm not too worried if we're just in the range. I'm, you know, that's not really what I'm looking at for a finished bar. These are the numbers that I'm looking at. So when I'm formulating a recipe, I, I like my numbers to be in the range here of what they've got, unless you're doing something really wonky. All right, I've cleared everything out, and this is just a mock-up recipe here. Let's do a recipe with, uh, let's just do coconut oil and olive oil. So... Let's do 50% coconut oil. You can't get more simple than this. And go down here and get to our olive oil. 50% olive oil. And let's go look at those numbers. So there is a super simple soap recipe. Calculate recipe and let's go over here and look. So hardness, it's gonna be a pretty hard bar soap. It's going to be way cleansing because 50% coconut oil is a lot. So the, the cleansing, you can make that IE drying at this point when it's over that. Conditioning, pretty low conditioning. Bubbles are mid-range because of the high coconut oil. Pretty low creaminess, you know, because it's going to be a drying soap. So a 50-50 coconut oil, olive oil, you know, it's a decent bar of soap, but it's going to dry your skin out um, at a 5%. When you have that high of a coconut oil, you're going to want to increase your super fat. So just an example of how these numbers work. But that's a really nice, nice gauge there. So let me just show you here. So if we take this exact recipe here and come back in and let's bring this down to, sorry about the shaky hands. 30% and now we need to add 20% of something else. So let's come on in here and choose just, uh, I'm just going to randomly choose. What do we want? Let's do hemp oil. Well, all right. Yeah, let's do hemp oil and let's just see what that gives us. I'm just playing with this so you get a feel for what you want to look for in a finished recipe. So here's the numbers. Hardness. So the hardness has went down. It's mid range. So it's a nice hard bar. Cleansing, it's still pretty high. Conditioning is pretty high now. Uh, bubbly is right in the middle, and the creaminess is low. So I, you know, for me, these are not favorable numbers. I would not make soap like this. But, you know, so that just gives you an idea of how you can play with this calculator. Um, and so the most important thing is you want to figure out the volume of whatever mold you're using. And there are YouTube videos on that. You can usually, if you look at where you purchased your mold from, they will tell you the capacity of that mold. Uh, so that is what I did. I looked at my little essential depot molds on the website and it said it holds four to six pounds of batter. 
total, and that would include the water and the lye. So I figured out, and I didn't want them to be full to the brim, so I figured out that I'd want about 48 ounces of oils. And once you get this number here, you can come over here and play around all you want. And if you go beyond 100% or under 100%, it will you know, correct you and tell you. Um, and then I just, it tells you these numbers over here. So this is not the recipe we're using, but I find this calculator very helpful. So this is what I will be running all the recipes that are going to be in the description box below. I will run each recipe through this calculator using the same 48 ounces, the 25% water as oils, water percent as oils, and a 5% super fat. That will be the same for each of the recipes. The only thing different is going to be the oils and the percentages, and I'll have them all written down below. So I hope this didn't confuse you. <laughs> um, sorry, I was playing around with ignore this recipe over here. I'm just going to take it away because this is not a good recipe. Um, so anyway, that is what it's going to look like for all of my recipes. And they have some really interesting oils listed in here. Milk thistle oil. Um, so I, this is just, I think it's a really good, I mean, rabbit fat. That's odd. But hey, it's listed on here. You could make soap with it. So I just think that this is a really good calculator because it has a lot of really good information to help with um, the hardness and the cleansing. These, no these are the numbers over here that really help me figure out if the recipe I'm, I'm working on is a good one or that I'm going to like it. All right, we are ready to roll with test batch number one. And I have, I have my little stickies next to each pile of stuff so I don't get confused. So this is the butters and oils in here. Test batch number one has 14.4 ounces of coconut oil, 4.8 ounces of palm, 2.4 ounces of cocoa butter, 2.4 ounces of castor, and 24 ounces of olive oil. That's what's in this bucket right now. And uh, let me show you what's going on. So um, we are doing a milk in oil for all of these batches today. So I have discounted my lye solution here to compensate for that. So here's my oil, here's my milk. This is five ounces of goat milk that I'm gonna be putting in here. Okay, so five ounces of goat's milk is going in here. And now, because this is a smaller batch, I'm not gonna use my regular scoops. These are two tablespoon scoops, that would be too much. So I have a one teaspoon of colloidal oats and I'll do a nice little heaping teaspoon and one teaspoon of kale and clay again a little heaping teaspoon so those are my oil additives going in this batch so off to the side what I did was I got each of my buckets filled with each of the oils for the four different batches and then the things that are going to be the same like the additives I got all the five ounces of goat milk for each batch um, and I made these little cups up. This has a tablespoon of French green clay and a half a teaspoon of spirulina powder. And that will go in the color swirl of each of these batches. So I want them as similar as possible. The only difference will be the different oil um, makeup. So uh, that would give us kind of, you know, just kind of a good test of how different oils behave. So let me get these blended in here. So it's time to add my lye solution, which is, let me look over at my recipe, 6.8 ounces of sodium hydroxide to seven ounces of water. So it was almost a 50-50 split so that I could get the maximum amount of goat milk and oil here. So that's what's going in here. I dissolved one teaspoon of cane sugar in the water before I added the sodium hydroxide. This does has tuss of silk fibers and sodium lactate. So that is that, that's what's going on in there. So what I'm gonna try to do here is mix and blend similarly. I don't wanna stir one more than the other. So I'm gonna use my stick blender to kind of stir and pulse to get emulsion and then um, split off, put the clay in color. So as similar as I can do each of these batches, the better, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to stir this and then pulse because I just want to feel like how fast it goes to trace. So this is recipe number one. So just a little pulse and the goat milk's caramelizing, which I think is just beautiful. 
just going to go to emulsion here. And this is so simple with the unscented. It's kind of a pleasure to do unscented soap sometimes. All right, definitely have emulsion. So I'm going to pour off my 0.75 liter here, just a little shy of a liter for my swirl. And here is my little cup of additives for the color swirl. All right, and let me just whisk this in to kind of get a feel. Of course, everything's behaving really well. It's not a beautiful, like, forest green color. I just think it's lovely. All right. That's feeling great, so I will go ahead and stick blend a little more here to get a nice kind of, you know, medium to light trace. That took a good while to come up to a really nice trace here, which is wonderful. We didn't have any fragrance, you know, messing around in there. So this took a good couple minutes to blend. It was very easy to work with. And I have a little hanger swirl I'm gonna run through here. After we layer it all in. So we're on to batch number two, whoops, upside down, number two here. Uh, and this is the oils. This is our palm free, our first palm free recipe, which has 14.4 ounces coconut oil, 2.4 cocoa butter, 2.4 shea butter, 2.4 castor, and 26.4 olives. So this is a palm free recipe. And I forgot to mention on the first batch, I'm soaping at about 80 to 85 degrees here. Uh, that first batch was a dream. I actually had to pause the camera and wait a little while till it got thick enough where I could texture the top. So, um, oh, and I already have, sorry, <laughs> I lost track here. I've got so many things going on. I've got to keep focused on each batch. This has the goat milk in it. The five ounces of goat milk is in here along with a teaspoon of colloidal oats and a teaspoon of kale and clay. And then here is our lye solution. It was just a little different because of the sap values are different uh, with each of these batches. You have to run it through and use it. You know, the lye scale for each of the oils is not the same. So this batch has 6.7 ounces of sodium hydroxide and seven ounces of water is mixed in here. Uh, I did the teaspoon of sugar before I added the sodium hydroxide, it has tussa silk fibers and sodium lactate. So that is what's in this little magical container. We'll go ahead and get this in and stir and pulse like we did last time till I get a feel for how the batter's behaving. And then I've got my little, um, little cup of additives for the color swirl off to the side here.
All right, this is batch number two. I've waited a couple of maybe five, 10 minutes here till it was ready to be textured on the top. And let me just tell you what I observed. This uh, palm free recipe number two was very creamy. Um, I'll describe it more like pudding. Uh, I really like the texture on it. And uh, it was very nice, easy, slow trace. So um, number two was a pleasure to blend. So here is number two, palm free. All right, batch number three, here we go. This has 13 ounces of coconut oil, 4.8 ounces of shea butter, 3.8 ounces of hemp seed oil, 2.4 ounces of castor, and 24 ounces of olive oil. That's what's going on in here. Here's the five ounces of goat milk. Same drill, same uh, everything. <laughs> Pretty much same everything. Last but not least, this is the last recipe, which has 14.4 ounces of coconut oil, 7.2 ounces of palm oil, and that's organically harvested, sustainably harvested palm, um, 2.4 ounces of castor oil, and 24 ounces of olive oil. So this just has four different oils in it. Uh, I've got the goat, goat's milk is already in here and the colloidal oats and the kale and clay. So I blended those all in there already. The same drill, here we go. This is the lye solution. This is 6.8 ounces of sodium hydroxide mixed in seven ounces of water with the cane sugar, tussa silk, and the sodium lactate.
So here they are in the mold. Here's number one, starting to dry on top here. Two, three, and four. We'll be back tomorrow to unmold these. All right, it's the next day. Um, so let me tell you, I wrapped these, I stacked them up and I wrapped them in a blanket. So these did go through gel phase last night. And then early this morning, I came down and steamed the tops. They didn't have any soda ash, but they were a little dull. And look how nice and bright they look now. So these are steamed tops on these. So I can't wait to get them out of the mold. I'm gonna do this one at a time. So we'll see how firm it is, if they unmold any different. So I'm gonna keep my little numbers on all of them. <laughs> my, my biggest problem was trying to keep everyone straight, like in order, so I knew which batch was which because they look so similar. So let's get to number one here and see how this bad boy unmolds. And again, these little Essential Depot molds are just so sturdy. I really have enjoyed having these and I've had these for years. All right, number one slid out of the mold. Nice crisp corners. It's a nice firm bar today. So this recipe so far is behaving really well and it went through gel phase no problem. So there is number one out of the mold. It unmolded very nicely. All right, number two. And I did, you know, put sodium lactate in all of the lye solutions. So that helps with the unmolding. Um, you know, the recipe of the soap does make a difference, but that sodium lactate really helps it unmold quicker. And like I said, there are, well, I've said in other videos, I haven't said in this video, but um, there are debates on whether sodium lactate after the cure creates a firmer bar, but it definitely does right out of the mold. Okay, batch number two. And I believe this was a palm-free batch. Let me look, yes. Got all my notes off to the side. So this was a palm-free batch. This also is nice and hard, unmolded really easy, nice crisp corners, so it's not soft today. So batch number two is out of the mold. All right, batch number three. This is also a palm-free recipe. So far, these are all unmolding really well. So what I'm doing is I just loosen it on the sides and then I just take my thumbs and kind of break the seal on the bottom and then it just slides out for these molds. Because they're too thick to peel away like some of the thinner silicones you can just peel. These ones are too thick for that. All right, batch number three. Feels a, maybe a little softer, but I still got nice crisp corners coming out of the mold. Um, it, it just feels not quite as hard as the other batch, but that's, you know, that's going to cure out of it anyway. But it did unmold nicely, so no problems there. So batch number three is out. And last but not least, batch number four. This was the simplest one. This only had four oils in it. Getting kind of crowded here. Um, so this was a very simple recipe. It didn't have any luxury oils, uh, any luxury butters in it. Also unmolded very nice. Feels, feels pretty firm, but you know what? This one also doesn't feel as firm as the first two batches, but it did come out nice and sharp corners, so it's not soft today, but it is not as firm as the first two. So there is batch number four. All right, now we get to cutting these. So we're ready to cut batch number one here. Uh, and I'm testing for how firm it is to cut through. This one is very firm, nice and solid feeling. Oh, that is cool. Isn't that pretty? So, and this is the end piece, but I think that's pretty. So I'm gonna let this go as a full slice. I just think those swirls are divine. And this cut really nice, so, um, so far, I'm loving the uh, recipe number one. All right, let's keep going here on number one. Again, it's a nice firm feel cutting down. Oh, those colors, that spirulina and green clay is just a really nice combo, isn't it? And again, you know, just unscented goat milk, 
These are just lovely. All right, we're on to batch number two, and this is the first of the palm free recipes. This one felt nice and firm cutting through. Oh, those swirls, come on. That's really pretty. So this felt really nice and uh, firm with the cutter going through. So it's a good hard bar right out of the mold. I like that in a soap. Unmolding for me is a big deal. I just really like it when the bars are firm and aren't too mushy. <laughs> So loving this. So um, this is was a 48 ounces of oil total in this uh, soap recipe for each of these. So it was just a little more than four pounds. And in the Essential Depot mold, I am getting 11 six ounce bars right now. So that's pretty nice. All right, let's keep cutting number two. I grabbed my ruler. I'll show you how big these bars are. So um, they're cutting right now. They're at 6.2 ounces. They will lose some weight after the cure. So they will cure out to be around 5.8 to 6 ounces. So this size of a bar in the Essential Depot mold is, let's get it on there, three and a little bigger than three and a quarter inches wide. And the four pound batch makes them about three to three and a quarter tall. And I am cutting these at just at one inch wide. So almost like, you know, a little generous three, generous three by one inch. And you're getting a 6.2 ounce bar on the cut, which will cure just a little bit lighter. And of course, that is just with this particular mold and with this particular size batch. If you do it in a different mold, you're going to have different dimensions. But I was just trying to give you a feel for how, what size. These are nice, big, generous bars, and I love that. And we are on to batch number three, and this is a palm-free recipe with the hemp seed oil in it. So this one does, from the outside at least, have a little bit more of a yellowish hue. But inside, it's looking pretty, I don't know. So that's the end of the hemp and that's the end of the knot hemp. So it's just a little bit richer color, I think, because the hemp seed oil is such a dark color, but I think it's, a, I think it's gorgeous. So that little bit of creaminess, I think just adds, I think it's beautiful. So this is feeling, I know I said when I unmolded it, it didn't feel as firm, um, but it's cutting, it does feel firm here on the cut. So it's a nice, this is a nice solid bar. It's not sticky or tacky. I really do like how this is unmolding and cutting. Um, so I kind of came to the conclusion after looking at all the recipes and the similarities as I was formulating them, the sweet spot for me is 50% oils and 50% hard. That to me is the sweet spot where it's not gonna trace too quick and you can still get a nice hard bar of soap. And for the bubbles, I tend to like about a 30% coconut, maybe 25%, but the 30% coconut gives me the lather that I like. But of course, we won't know that on these until a couple of weeks from now when we do the lather test. All right, so this is batch number three. All right, batch number four. And this again was the simplest recipe with only four oils, very basic, and it feels good to cut, it's firm. It's not tacky on the inside. Um, and yeah, it's hard. I think the first two batches were a little firmer on the unmold, but when it comes to cutting here, I'm having to use just about the same amount of pressure. It's a nice firm cut. It's not soggy or tacky or squishy inside, so I'm liking it. This one is a little softer than the first one but it's still, you know, on my radar, this would be a very good unmolding and a good soap, but it's just not quite as firm as the first recipe. But with all that being said, it's a very simple recipe. The ingredients were readily available to find and um, it's gonna be great. I can't wait to see the lather on this compared to the other ones, but I'm just loving the color swirl and the tops. All right, batch number one, I'm gonna clean up with my beveler here. And these are nice and firm, just like the cutting. 
Uh, so I unmolded these at 24 hours and um, cut them and have, they have sat now for a couple of hours and now I'm ready to stamp. So let's see, I'll do that side. So this is the next day. There, it's nice and firm. Batch number one. Bar number two, or batch number two. This one is a little smoother on the cut. Um, it's still very firm, but it's just, uh, I don't know how to describe it other than it's just a little more glidey on the cut and on the on this, you know, beveling. That's what I'm trying to say, goodness. All right, let's see how it stamps. The other one was very firm to stamp. Yeah, that's good. So I like this one too. Batch number two. Batch number three. Here we go. It's hard to describe, but you can feel, um, you know, the different firmness and textures when you're beveling and stamping. You can, you can just kind of get a feel for the soap. This one's really nice too. They're all really good, but you can feel some are a little firmer than others. This one is a medium firmness right now, but it's still a very, it's not tacky at all. Batch number three. All right, batch number four. So I'm getting ready to do photography on these bars and here they all are in a row. Very, very similar, um, but from so far just from cutting and beveling, batch number one is the hardest. Um, batch number two and three are very smooth feeling. Batch number four is the softest and yet it's still a nice hard bar. So it's going to be really interesting to see the lather test on these, but uh, there they are. This was really fun. All right, so I am back. It has been uh, over two weeks since I made all these test batches, and I'm here to do a lather test. So I just have plain warm water in my bowl here, and I'm going to start with recipe number one. Uh, just a reminder, this has palm, and it has the cocoa butter. Let's see, coconut palm, cocoa butter, castor, and olive. That's in recipe number one. So I'm going to grab a bar here that after I test this, this will be my bar. I get to keep one bar from each of these batches, so that's fun for me. But, all right, number one, oh man, you, you don't understand, as a soap maker, for me to use a full, like, brand new bar of soap is such a treat. I all, pretty much always use, like, the wonky end pieces, and, you know, if a bar drops or gets bonked, I get, like, the scratch and dent in my shower, so this is very um, luxurious for me to use a brand new whole bar of soap. All right, recipe number one. Put it in here. Now let's see how this one lathers up. It's already, just look at that, a couple of swoops in my hand and it's already getting big bubbles on it. So it feels smooth. I had somebody ask me if the colloidal oats made it gritty. It doesn't um, because it's such a fine grind. All right, so I just ran it around. So already we're getting nice big bubbles. Now this does have sugar in the lye solution as well as uh, the castor oil creates bubbles uh, and the sugar so that okay so it's a nice sort of dense slippy lather very easy to lather up creamy good lather so number one has a very dense sort of creamy lather and it's beautiful and even though it's unscented it just has a nice soapy you know scent to it so all right Batch number one. Here we go with batch number two. All right, batch number two has coconut, cocoa butter, shea butter, castor, olive. Uh, so that's this one has the cocoa butter and the shea butter in it. Nice hard bar of soap. 
Oh, I feel so spoiled getting to use real, like, big whole bars. <laughs> All right. So it doesn't get the big loopy lather right away, but it, oh man, this feels soft and creamy. So, all right, there's the big bubbles coming. I mean, you can't really see in the um, camera there, but as soon as you turn it in your hands, you, you pick up nice lather. So this one is a, maybe a little more bubbly a little less dense but very creamy builds up really quick i mean that's you could shave with this it's nice and thick and creamy and that was just after a couple of turns in my hands so number two has a little bit bigger lather not quite as thick but still very creamy and dense for number two all right moving on to number three uh, number three has coconut shea hemp seed oil castor and olive so this is the hemp one um, this, this is uh, number two is a palm free this is also a palm free so let's give these a whirl and these feel just as hard the palm free ones feel just as hard as the ones with palm and again, when I made the batter, it felt like a more pudding, it was a smoother batter. So that's very interesting to me because I do tend to use palm in most of my recipes. All right, this one has, yeah, this again, oh my word, it's almost like a shaving lotion. It's like lotiony lather. This is very lotiony, very small, but thick. Um, yeah, I don't know how else to describe it. It kind of feels like a lotiony lather. It's very nice, dense. Definitely, I mean, this would make a great shaving soap recipe. It just feels great. So a little bit denser bubbles on number three here. Not as, you know, not big fluffy, but dense and lathery and um, very lotiony feeling on number three. So we're on to our last but not least batch number four. And this was the simplest recipe with coconut palm, castor, and olive. So this doesn't have any luxury butters in it. Um, so let's give this one a whirl. It's a simple recipe. Let's see if it lathers nice. But again, with the sugar in the lye water and the castor oil, those are both good lathering boosting agents. Castor oil does aid in bubbles, but um, when you're working with castor oil, I don't like to go over 5% because I feel like it can make a tacky soap, so I keep it low on the castor just to help with the bubbles. So all right, there's number four. And these are bigger bubbles. It's a little bit more bubbly. This is more of a classic soap lather. A little bit more, um, but very nice. It's got a good lather. It's more classic bubbles though. And it doesn't feel as lotiony as the last one with the hemp oil, but it's a bigger lather. Still really nice. It's a good, simple, basic recipe. So number four is great. If you don't have luxury oils around or you're looking for just a real simple, easy recipe, number four still lathers really nice. So there you go.